Hi, in a previous repair video, LinkedIn if you haven't seen it, I uh, repaired one of my failed Aperture Amaran uh, HR672C LED studio lights. And spoiler alert, I recommend you watch it first because it's quite interesting how I uh, trace it down. It's a failed MOSFET. And uh, simply replacing the MOSFET, which I salvaged uh, from a dumpster laptop, which was pretty cool, um, I fixed the light. So that was a winner winner, a chicken dinner. But I thought I'd do a follow-up video actually um, showing you how when I first actually found this MOSFET I went to search for it. Um, I knew it was a MOSFET and I searched for it and I couldn't find any data on it whatsoever. And I didn't recognize the markings on it. So I had to actually not only find the manufacturer but to figure out exactly what MOSFET it was but also uh, potentially find a replacement as well. Even though in this video I actually got a replacement uh, MOSFET which is not similar specs at all um, from a dumpster laptop and it worked just fine which is excellent but I, I thought what it'd be interesting to do is a video showing you a how to find that how I found that specific uh, manufacturer of that MOSFET and then uh, potentially finding actual replacement parts for it either the identical replacement part or a, like an equivalent uh, a part especially if the specifications matter because this just happened to be an interesting example of where it uh, uses one of these um, obscure Asian brand manufacturers you've probably never heard of if you're just used to all your mainstream manufacturers for your semiconductors and it didn't have a typical type number on it so you couldn't just readily find oh yeah I can get one of those from Vishale. So let's take a look at the MOSFET in question shall we it's actually uh, down here it is this bad boy here uh, it's got actually two numbers on it 4303 and RR6S a, and if you're not familiar with parts, you might know well which is the what is the part number? Is it the top one? Is it the bottom one? Is it all of it tied together? Should you search for the whole thing? What would you search for? And then here's the manufacturer's brand over here. What is this one? And it looks like they've got a similar one up here, but it's a bit fuzzier. And this one over here as well. Uh, well, the first thing is you have to sort of give an educated guess. You can go search for the part number, but the first thing is is you have to identify what actual component you're looking at here. But we won't get ahead of ourselves. Step number one is to identify, well, what part is this? If you're not uh, experienced, how do you identify that this uh, failed chip here is actually a MOSFET? Well, first of all, you look at the reference designator. In this particular case, it's Q. That's a Q4. There's Q3 up here. There's Q11 over here. And Q is the industry standard uh, designator for tran transistor. So if you see a Q, you know it's a transistor of some time and some type. So it could be a BJT, a bipolar junction transistor. It could be a MOSFET, a metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor, or it could be a JFET, a junction uh, FET. And uh, but JFETs aren't really used these days. And for this sort of application for uh, LED lights, you basically you need these for uh, switching. In this particular case, it's actually switching the battery packs and things. But even if you didn't know that, um, this sort of application you go, eh, it's more likely to be a MOSFET these days. They're more popular than uh, BJTs for uh, like high current switching applications because the on resistance of these chips is much lower. They're, you know, you can get like much higher power ones in a package and all the characteristics are around it. Just mean MOSFETs are better for like switching power type stuff, switching, you know, driving LEDs and switch mode uh, converters and, uh, you know, stuff like that. So it's most likely if you see a Q in this sort of application, most likely going to be a MOSFET. But there is another way to tell, and that's to get it at the right angle. Sorry, this uh, I didn't take a specific photo for this. I probably should have. But you can see up here that, uh, let's have a look at the one at the top. You can't see it as well down the bottom. But you can see that, look, there's a huge big track here. These three pins are actually shorted, and you'd be able to measure this with your uh, multimeter as well. So it's got three shorted pins here, and the and look, this is just one trace here on this side. So all four pins on this side are shorted, and this one you can see a trace just going off there like that. And this for an SO8 package that we've got here, this is a classic pinout for a MOSFET. 
And the other reason you know it's a MOSFET, because generally you're not going to get a BJT transistor in an SO8 package like this. In fact, if we go over here and we search DigiKia, just search for BJT, and then I went in the search for single uh, BJTs, and then you go over here to package, uh, package case over here, and you scroll down and scroll down. Oh, look, we can get some 8-pin SOICs, but let's see how many of those we get. Yeah one basically um, and there's zero stock and it's obsolete it's like yeah you don't really get bjt uh transistors in an so8 package so that's uh, you know once again another giveaway that you can do this and this is where you can actually learn a heck of a lot by doing troubleshooting like this because you go in and then you go oh what is this part like you could um, do a tear down take a, a part random things you go i have no idea what this is and you can slowly use clues to figure out exactly what it is but anyway it's almost certainly a mosfet so if you have a look at the data sheet for the MOSFET that I actually um, sucked out of the dumpster laptop that I got and used as a replacement uh, for this, then you can see down here, it's a just a regular MOSFET like this, and it's got the four drain pins on one side and the three source pins on the other with the gate pin. And that's exactly what we're seeing in this uh, photo here. So right off the bat, we've identified this as it's almost certainly a MOSFET um, of some description. We don't know the specifications. We don't know anything, although you can kind of guess at the specifications because this is uh, like, for example, uses a, a two cell eight volt uh, lithium battery. For example, the rated power is uh, 45 volts in this thing. Anyway, if you get your confuser out, you go like 45 watts maximum power. You divide it by eight, for example, assuming it's doing some sort of, uh, you know, Know, battery switching or driving for the leds or something like that we're only talking about you know five amps or something like that so you'd be looking ballpark that this would be at least a five amp anyway at this stage you're guaranteed that's a mosfet uh you know it's probably maybe five amps or something like that and you can see like the big traces you know it's related to the battery you know the batteries are delivering all the power when uh it's not powered uh from the mains so you know you know look and there's big fat traces going to it and yeah look at the size of these traces right huge big thick traces that means they're carrying a lot of current that means you're talking amps instead of like milliamps or hundreds of milliamps and uh, therefore based on the uh, power uh, specification for this uh, like maximum power specification you know you're talking like you know five-ish odd amps so it's definitely not like a signal uh, transistor like we got down here right little SOT23 uh, package it's called that's also a Q5 you don't know whether that's a BJT or a MOSFET could be either really um, you just like yeah I wouldn't even like to guess at that so how do we get the part number? Well, it's we don't seem to have like a date code on this thing, which will be two digits and two digits. Um, in fact, do we even have a chip on here that actually has a date code? Not the charger chip over here. It doesn't even have a date code. It'll be a uh, year and week, basically. So if it was made in, you know, 2018, for example, it'd have 18 and then another two digits would be, might be, you know, 18 again, which would be the 18th week in 2018, for example, that it was made. But anyway, right off with the bat, we know that second row of information there is not a date code. RR6SA. Well, that doesn't sound like a part number to me. And if you're familiar with MOSFETs, so once again, if if you uh, just go into a uh, digikey mouser funnels and element 14 who, whoever it is go in and search the parametric uh, table for mosfets and you'll get familiar that yeah a 4303 sounds like a you know kind of a, a familiarish kind of number so i'm going to run with 4303 is the number of the mosfet and up here we've got 4307 and this has got rt26s so these are like radically different so that's second line of information there that doesn't seem related to the part number right so the first thing i do is uh, well search for 4303 pdf let's see what we get it's not national instruments uh, all data sheets okay nothing is generic coming up so gw instec um no right oh analog.com ltc 4303 a hot swappable two wire bus buffer well no it's not that we know it's a mosfet so i would search for mosfet and then pdf i like adding pdf to the end because it gives you a data sheet link pretty much off the bat well here we go sm4303 mosfet so we can go in i'll right click on that pn4303 there you go oh that's a jfet 
right? That's a junction FET. JFETs are not uh, power devices like this. So yeah, I don't think it's a 4303. Here it is, SM4303 PDF data sheet. There you go. We got it. Now, this is interesting down here on Semi. They're a big manufacturer. So you can see that I've clicked on that before when I was uh, doing my searches. Let's have a look at the on Semi. What's on Semi got for the NCP4303? Come on, interwebs. Aha, this is not a MOSFET. Are we wrong in our analysis of the PCB? This is a secondary size synchronous rectification driver for high efficiency switchway power supplies. In a LED lamp, uh, like the LED light like this, you'd certainly expect a bunch of uh, switch mode power supplies. In fact, there's inductors and, and other things in there that show you this has switch mode power supplies. So were we wrong? First thing is just take a look at the pin out and you can see that, well, no, you wouldn't short out like pins one, two, and three here. And you certainly wouldn't short out eight, five, six, seven, and eight on this side. So you know it's a MOSFET. So there you go. You can be led up the garden path there. It just happens to be the, um, the same uh, part number 4303 and the other links we got were like started MOSFET 4303 MOSFET boom It's a P channel MOSFET for maximum power dissipation 4.30 volts That's what we're looking at. Okay, and we another link here But bingo we did eventually get a link over here to a data sheets pdf.com and sure enough uh, We do have a data sheet down here a Sino power um, data sheet. I had never heard of uh, Sino Power before, but SM4303 PSU. So there you go, click on that, and um, unfortunately that is not the correct package. So um, yeah, you might um, stop there, but anyway, I'm going to have a look at Sino Power. Another thing we can get, do is go to your favorite catalog suppliers and we can go 4303 like this, and it'll give you a bunch of links like that, but I don't want to click on those, I just want Give me everything. Transistors, MOSFET, single. There we go. There we go. Let's have a look down here. Um, that is not the number. That is not the <laughs> These are not the droids that we're looking for. Um, yeah, nah. Um, something's wrong there. So I'm not sure is where was that in the part. Maybe that has it obscurely in the part number somewhere. I don't know why that's a match. But anyway, that's all we got, right? on uh, DigiKey. So obviously this 4303, we know it's a MOSFET, but it's not a mainstream uh, part number MOSFET. So what we do now is search out for that Sino Power which we got before, and maybe we'll get lucky. And uh, sure enough, here's the website, sinopower.com. Uh, we have to, let's go to the English version just to help us out a tad. Ooh, look, we can go in stakeholder engagement, fact sheet. <laughs> do we want to look at the stakeholder engagement? Anyway, this is, it turns out, it's a Taiwanese uh, manufacturer, and it looks like um, they specialize in just, this is their main product page, NMOS and PMOS. Um, the P and N channel MOSFETs, that's all they do. So, yeah, okay, 4303, right? You're feeling lucky. We're starting to narrow this down. Bingo, SM4303. Aha, SOP8. SOP8 package, SO8. Look, look at this, data sheet package, tape and real quality reports. Fantastic, I'm liking this da uh, website. Sino Power, and bingo, we have it. Um, the Sino Power SM4303 PSK, and one, like it's got the standard pinout for MOSFETs, the four uh, pins for the drain, the three pins for the source, and the one for the gate down there, which is pin four, and that's exactly what we see there. Now, interestingly, this actually has built-in gate protection. You can see here, and uh, it tells you over here, ESD protection, and eight, eight kilovolts, and it's reliable and rugged. Well, if it's reliable and rugged, why did it fail in our product? Anyway, let's not go there. Um, winner, winner, chicken dinner. We have found the data sheet for this, and you'll notice that their symbol there matches our symbol over here. So you've got to turn your head that way, and um, it, it, yeah, it looks like they match. So this is a Sina Power brand. We have the exact data sheet for this MOSFET, and it looks like this part number for this uh, MOSFET is specific to Sino Power. Um, I could not find a reference to any other manufacturer that makes a 4303 uh, P-channel MOSFET like this. So it's just a Sino Power thing. So it looks like uh, Aperture, who uh, designed these things, they actually specified in in a lot of parts in here. Look at the Sino Power, Sino Power, Sino Power. In fact, all the MOSFETs in here 
uh, I believe, uh, signer power. There's like eight or nine MOSFETs in here. Down here, down here, two up here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, it's like, you know, <laughs> 10 or 11 of them or something like that, MOSFETs. And they're all signer power. But curiously, they do actually use a different one here, which is a 4307. You might think, ah, okay, this is a P-channel. This is an N-channel one. Well, 4307, it's also a P-channel one here. And... I mentioned this in the uh, previous video. It's near identical, but it doesn't have the internal gate protection. So why are you designing one with gate protection, one without? Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, anyway, I would actually consolidate these parts. And as you saw in my repair video, you don't really have to match the specifications that closely for this. But we're going to assume in this particular case, that we do. So how do we find an equivalent part for this? I've already said that we can't actually find this um, in from different manufacturers, so I won't waste your time like going into DigiKey and Mousa or Element 14 or any of those. I like we can't find this anywhere. In fact, you Google it and you can't find it. If we just Google SM4303 MOSFET, um, like it's throwing up Mouser, uh, but these are just uh, generic ads. These aren't matches. These aren't recommended. It's just that um, DigiKey, Element 14, and Mouser, they have all paid uh, <laughs> to be in the search results when you search for MOSFET. In fact, if we search for MOSFET, will these ads come up? Uh, well, no, we get the Wikipedia, we get the guide. It's more generic, but yeah, it seems more generic now. But anyway, look, if we do one, two, three, four, five MOSFET, right? What do we get? Like we just get like diodes and corporate, like DigiKey again, element 14. They've paid, right? There is no one, two, three, four, five MOSFET. Where is there? Um, <laughs> I don't think so. High voltage super junction MOSFET. Um, full in-depth analysis. What? No, that's a market overview thing. Anyway, let's not go there. So there's a little tip. Don't fall for uh, these ads that, you know, thinking, oh, this must be an equivalent. Maybe, you know, Element 14 have determined that this is an equivalent part. No, it's not. You can tell A from the package. Uh, B, this is an N-channel uh, high voltage job, 300 volts. Thank you very much. Um, and yeah, no, these aren't equivalent. These are just paid ads. But yeah, so the only stuff we get is the SM4303 from the data sheets. And if you go and look at them all, uh, there's a there's a Japanese one. Oh, custom power design. Is that maybe someone makes an equivalent? But yeah, like all trend, like it's this is like, oh, well, we start getting into Russian stuff down here, right? Only four, but like it's, there are obviously no, uh, you know, main brand manufacturers or even equivalent ones of the 4303. Um, yeah, no, look, a rollerball quick connect no okay we're just completely off track so it looks like sino power are the only ones who make the 4303 so even though these weren't showing up and did you keep mouse or uh, google or anything like that as an equivalent manufacturer let's see if we can get an exact replacement uh my go-to place would be lcsc they're kind of like the digikey mouse equivalent like in uh china and you've seen me uh use them before i've got like you know the, the what is it the two cent microcontroller from there or something like that so anyway let's go into lcsc and uh let's go they've got like huge inventory very sim mousery uh digikey Key like so 4303 and if we search for that let's have a look operational amplifier fuses compressor layer pro order no show more results no transistors mosfets two bingo we have it look at this we got one a hey, the sino power look they actually stock sino power semiconductors and wouldn't you know they've got a 19 in stock um and it's the exact part and if you go in there and see the data sheet it's the exact part bingo so we actually found this in stock right so we can actually if you wanted the exact replacement we can actually get it from lcsc i think that's amazing but it's also bought up which didn't we didn't find in google searches it looks like somebody else does make this and i just noticed this now um look at this a vb semi so8 mosfet let's go in and see if it's an equivalent MOSFET. Uh, it's a it's a P channel, 30 volts. There you go. So once again, another Taiwanese manufacturer, VB Semi, that another one I've never heard of, but I just found this now. I didn't this didn't come up in my uh, searches before when I was doing it for my previous video. And it's yeah, it's the same. I think it's 12 amps, is it? Um, at VGS 4.5, 30, continuous drain current at minus 10 of 14 amps. 
at 70 degrees at 10 volts yeah 13.5 so yeah um it looks like yeah there is one other manufacturer equivalent of that part um so yeah if you were designing this product and you like, you really wanted to use this side power part because it's ultra cheap you would also probably um test and spec in um this vb semi one as well just in case you couldn't get one or the other you might be able to substitute these and you know you'd have to go into all the details and you know but for some application like this you know as we saw in my repair video just a generic MOSFET pulled out of a uh, laptop did the job just fine. Right, so let's say that you couldn't get either of these. Let's say they didn't have stock or you couldn't get them or whatever, right? You're... <laughs> yet you're stuck how do you find a replacement well this is when you have to go into the data sheet and you have to look at the specifications well for mosfets what specifications are the most important well it's got to be a p channel okay it's got to be either a p channel or an or an n channel so you definitely want the same you want a p channel right so right off the bat that's your main selection criteria uh then you need it needs to be an enhancement mode uh mosfet um they're like most generic mosfets are enhancement uh, mode MOSFETs so you know you don't really have to that's not something that you'd search for generally um, that's something that just like comes out in the wash but the main requirements are uh, for the MOSFET are your voltage and current uh, requirements and the power dissipation for the part as well but we'll you know we'll have a look at that okay it's nominally 30 volt rated they they put minus in there because it's a p channel if it was an n channel uh that's how you can tell even some data sheets don't tell you if it's p channel or n channel here's how you tell it'll be if it's p channel it's minus x volts um or if it's n channel it's going to be positive so it's a nominal 30 volt 17 17 and a half amp MOSFET but as we did the calculation before this thing's only going to do like five amps absolute tops or something like that so you know it's been used uh it's way over specified for this application which is very common of course that's why I didn't have any hesitation in using this alpha and omega one that I pulled from a uh, laptop um as a replacement it's a minus it's a 30 volt 12 amp one instead of a 17 amp one but it doesn't really matter anyway the third thing we have to look at is the rds on at and that will be given at a particular uh vgs or gate source voltage um and this particular case they, they usually give you like two values and these are fairly common uh like 10 volts and four and a half volts or five volts or something like that so rds on is the re R rds means the resistance between the drain and the source pin because this is the transistor and the gate actually controls it so it's the resistance uh between the two pins when you enable the mosfet because in this particular case it's just being used as a switch basically off or on um so it's going to be completely open or it's going to be completely shorted and the when it's completely shorted it will have an rds on that means it's switched on of nine milliohms maximum uh and but that's at 10 volts if you've only got a five volt drive say you've got five volt circuitry actually driving this thing then um typically then you're going to get you know 15 milliohms something like that so uh, these things so you want to have at least those uh specifications to match unless you're certain like i was that this was a well over specified component and the rds on it didn't really matter because i knew that this particular part it doesn't get hot these so8 packages these have no thermal pad on the bottom so they're not dissipating any uh power really you know Th this package i think is what was it rated for four watts or something like that if your so8 package is dissipating four watts ooh, you're going to be getting the heebie-jeebies um it's going to get like super hot so yeah anyway so i knew it was used well under specification just based on the top level product spec for this lead light that i've got there's just no way it could be uh using it either charging it or uh consuming uh, the current to power lights at anywhere close to its 17 amp rating it, it'd be a five like absolute tops so that's why we had nine milliohms and 15 milliohms here that's why i was safe in using a uh one that had 14 milliohms and 30 milliohms so double right at at, at, at five volts here at vgs 5 volts it was double the resistance but even at 30 milliohms like 5 volts i squared r 
0.75 watts even at 5 ohms and it's going to handle that's well within like the thermal specification of the package which you should be able to get down here here you go maximum power dissipation down here at 25 at ambient temperature of 25 degrees c three watts or if it's like getting hot inside this thing as it would inside a lead uh, you know light like this with no circulating airflow or whatever two watts maximum so even if it was being used at five amps we're like well under half of its maximum power dissipation so yeah, I, I just knew this part was going to be fine and it was going to work. So for something like this application, that's I, I could get away with using almost anything. And in terms of maximum uh, voltage here, um, 30 volts. Once again, this is over specified. We've got two battery packs uh, in series here. Absolute maximum at uh, 8 point um, whatever volts each. So, you know, something 17, 18 volts is all that's required. So 30 volts was well over specified but the, the replacement part uh, was identical voltage spec so i had no problems there uh, whatsoever in using this one and sure enough it worked because i knew um it's just basically the topology of what's going on here okay here, here's the two battery connections here and uh you can see in the repair video especially and i did a two hour uh, live video as well actually debugging this where i talked a lot of, more about like my uh, theory behind this as I was analyzing uh, the circuit and stuff. I mean, this was obviously doing switching of the batteries here, either uh, charging or using them as loads. So you switch them off, you switch the charge in, um, or you can switch or you can switch them out so that uh, they're powering the product and stuff like that. So you know, I, I knew that these things um, were being used as switches for this battery. So for a switch application, you can pretty much ignore like every other specification on this data sheet apart from voltage current rds on that's pretty much um all you're gonna have to do and i wasn't worried about the fact that it didn't have internal gate protection like this if it blew it blew who cares because i zapped it with these like it, it doesn't matter right so that's why i thought the absolute the absence of that um really didn't matter a rat's so the absolute maximum uh, specifications, yeah, the voltage and the current were well within that. Junction temperatures doesn't matter. It's not being used in a blast furnace or something. Uh, maximum power dissipations were well under that. Um, the thermal uh, values as well, we're not dissipating. These, when in operation, I could feel that the chips weren't even getting warm at all. Um, so yeah, it made like it, it, they weren't dissipating any power. So your degrees C per watt, uh, thermal thermal resistance, junction to ambient. I've done a whole thermal resistance videos, done a couple of those. They're really good. Link them in. You know, and we don't care about like zero gate like drain current and stuff like that. Whether it's like like my ten one microamp or ten microamps, like nah, it doesn't matter, right? This is not some critical application. Gate threshold uh, voltages. This is not some ultra low voltage operation thing so we're not worried about anything like that the gate leakage current you know like who cares but that rds on we've talked about that and they give typical values here and then maximum values over here you might have to go into typical versus maximum if you get in a bit more like on the margin uh whether or not uh, you think your part might be equivalent or not you might you know like typicals versus maximums might matter uh, you might have to look for some parametric data further on in your data sheet, but you're really getting into details. Now, I could do like a two-hour video solid of going through every single specification on a MOSFET data sheet. <laughs> And we don't worry about like reverse recovery times. This is not used in some ultra efficient switch mode converter where, you know, stuff like this is going to matter in terms of, oh, that makes the difference between whether it's a 95% efficient switching converter or whether it's a 90% efficient switching converter and stuff like that. We just like, it, we just don't care. <laughs> and stuff like the uh, gate resistance, which is related to the gate capacitance at like one, one megahertz, eh, I, I, it doesn't matter. Then you've got input capacitance, output capacitance, reverse transfer capacitance, all this sort of stuff. It's only if you're dealing with, like if, if you're doing a repair, something like this like especially mosfets um and in this particular application they're going to be used for either logic switching power switching as we've got in this case or they're going to be used in switching uh converters it's only in switching converters that you'd really start worrying about anything to do with any of these dynamic characteristics this is why they call them dynamic instead of static characteristics because it's dynamic it's only when they're switching this is not using a switching converter so we have no need for any of the to care about 
won't give one rat's ass about any of the dynamic characteristics. And gate charge here, once again, this is another dynamic characteristic of how much uh, actual charge is required um, to uh, turn on the gate, and that's related to the time and everything else. And we don't need to worry about any of that. And likewise, um, I didn't even need to look at any of these characteristic curves because uh, we just weren't even close to it. You know, thermal transient impedance, you know, like, and a safe operating area. No, we're just looking for, you know, is it sort of like jelly bean equivalent? But what happens if you did want to match this closer? Well, we would have to go over here and we would have to choose. Uh, I'll just choose DigiKey because whatever, you can use Mousey, you can use Element 14, you can use any other parametric search engine that you like. Anyway, so we're going to search and try and find an equivalent, like, you know, a name brand part that we can get from many different manufacturers to look as a replacement. And you might be doing this, of course, in your design process as well when you're finding equivalents. Okay, you found this SinoPower one and it's two cents in volume. <gasps> Beauty! But just in case you want to have like a couple of equivalent parts on your bill of materials just in case you can't get that super cheap Sino power part or there's a war in Taiwan or something and boom you instantly can't get um, your oh, demonetize um, you can't get your <laughs> Taiwanese parts so anyway we go into MOSFETs singles here because well, it's a single jobby none of this array rubbish and MOSFETs, and here's all the manufacturers that uh, <laughs> DigiKey carry. Look, there's ones I've never, you know, there's Catalyst Semiconductor and Alpha Omega. They, they might be a bit obscure to a lot of people. Central Semiconductor Corp, never heard of them. Comchip Technology, D Components, Galco Industrial Electronics. <laughs> like, you know, like who's heard of these companies, right? Um, unless you were doing, unless you were looking at MOSFETs a lot, which I haven't been doing lately. Um, you know, there's a, there's a few names in there that I don't recognize. Wolf Speed Inc. <laughs> Zhengzhou Zhi. Yangji Electronics Co. Um, yeah, okay. Anyway, parametric ser searching now, okay? P channel is the big thing, okay? We want apply all, okay? So we only get P channel MOSFETs. And really, you could say, well, only active parts. Um, you don't want discontinued at DigiKey, probably. You don't want last time buys. Um, that means like a manufacturer going has put out a notice saying, uh, we're not making this chip anymore. If you need them, buy them now. This is the last time we're going to let you buy them. So you better buy a million of them. Otherwise, don't, you know, <laughs> you'll be sorry. So, and not, not for new designs, obsolete. You don't want any of those. So we want active. So we've got 3,170 Right, so you'll see that we have a whole bunch of specifications here. We've got drain to source voltage, continuous drain current, drive voltage, RDS on, uh, VGS uh, max. We've got gate charge, which is, you know, the, the, there's some, those dynamic characteristics we we're talking about. Uh, VGS max, input uh, gate capacitance, um, shocky diode isolated, whether or not it's got special features. It's got a shocky diode in there. Ooh, fancy pantsy. And then, of course, package. Package is the other big one. If we can't find the same package um, there's just no point so let's go SIOIC okay we want the standard width thank you very much okay we don't want uh, any of that uh, five millimeter width rubbish so there's now 278 remaining okay so we've dropped it way down we can still get the one with the shocky diode in are you sure you don't want it are you sure and we could actually narrow that down a bit SIO SOIC SIO SOP but let's just leave that uh, for now because sometimes they might actually have those sort of things incorrect. Like they might actually have the width. Uh, the width is more likely to be correct than one of the supplier device packages anyway. You can, you know, just be careful. Look, look, we, we've got BGAs. Why, why are we getting BGAs? Why? That's not an SO8. Yeah, we've, we've really been screwed over here. Aha, uh -huh, you see? If I scroll down here, they've miscategorized some of these. A PG DSO8 is in an 8-pin SOIC thing. So you see how I warned you that the supplier device package might actually be wrong. That is actually the case here. Um, th this is a good example. So I'm going to go SO and SOIC like this. Apply all. Um, SOP. Well, let's, let's just try SOP as well. Okay. So if we do that, bingo, now we've got all of our SO8P 
packages. We have 270 devices. Well, we could go in stock, but at the moment, <laughs> how many is 65? Okay, we can get 65 that are actually in stock. Should we stick with the in stock ones? Yeah, let's let's stick with the in stock ones because the in stock ones are most likely to be ones that have generic equivalents from different manufacturers. So, oh, Rochester. Um, if you see Rochester Electronics, they're actually a, um, a obsolete component supplier who do actually like who stock, they stock wafers and everything else. We discussed this on the Amp Hour um, many times. D yeah, nah, you don't want one from Rochester Electronics. But anyway, these are more generic part numbers that I'm seeing here. These are from Fairchild, uh, Diodes Inc., you know, Vichay, right, Infineon. Um, yeah, these are all your main brand ones down here. Okay, so the next main important requirement is the drain source voltage, like the maximum voltage of this part. Okay, don't worry about the gate source voltage. Let's go for the drain source voltage, VDSS, because that is what we'll find here, drain to source voltage, okay? It's so important that it's over on this side of the uh, <laughs> of the parametric table, okay? So we're looking for at least 30 volts, okay? You'd want to match it. Um, in fact, I wouldn't go as high as, well, you could, okay? If we put that, 65, that's narrowed it down to 40. If we narrow it down to like exact equivalent, you can see up here, it's 34 remaining, okay? So let's actually go for an exact 30 volt equivalent part, right? So let's go apply all, okay? We've got our 30 volts like this. You can do this like multiple times. You don't have to do it one by one. But anyway, now we're left with our continuous drain current. So what were we, we, we looking at here? We were looking at 17 and a half amps because that's going to be the banner spec at 25 degrees C. They're a bit naughty there. They'll just give it to you at, you know, ambient temperature. Whereas inside your product, like this lead light, it's going to be operating at a higher um, temperature. But th that will be the banner spec, right? 17.6 amps, okay? So that's what we're going to find. You're going to find the banner specs on the data sheet here, okay? So we're looking at least, could be that one, that's 19.3 amps, so I'll include that, but like we're looking at 18, 22 amps, 34 amps in a SO8 package? Well, that could be special. <laughs> anyway, we're, now we're narrowing it down, so let's apply. We've only got six remaining, okay? That's not many. So at this point, we might actually start regretting um, choosing the uh, like like in stock option or whatever. Um, so yeah, stocking options, we could actually take that back out if we wanted to. But anyway, these are the ones we've got here. Okay, Vichay Siliconics. Okay, so they're uh, you know they're they're absolutely huge. So that's 14 amps. I don't know why it's like a jewel. Anyway, um, these are getting pretty pricey, aren't they? 75 cents, you know, two dollars thirteen, two bucks fifty, right from Rome. Anyway, we've got a good. We've We've got three manufacturers at least. We've got Vichay, uh, Taiwan Semiconductor Arm Corp. Well, you don't want another one from Taiwan. You remember that war thing I you know, told you about? So you might, you know, you might go with uh, Rome or somebody like that. Okay. Anyway, the um, SI4153 sounds like a much more generic -y type MOSFET number. I don't know. I've never used it. it just sounds more generic -y than a T TSM 05085P03 or an RSE3 uh, RS3E180. Right? So, so I'm, I'm going, oh, there's no data sheet. Ah, oh, well, screw that. They can't even give us a data sheet. Okay. There's another Vichet one down here, 4425. Let's go for that jobby, shall we? We get 645 of those in stock. Now you notice uh, one thing is that um, this thing doesn't have what this one has, which is the gate protection down here. So if you wanted something really equivalent, did we even see that feature on the DigiKey? I don't think we ever saw that on the special feature. You'd have to go right back to the beginning, most FET. Don't search for most FETs, um, search for MOSFETs, highly recommended. <laughs> Singles, okay, we'd have to go back into here and we'd have to go across. Maybe you might get it as a FET feature. Current sensing, depletion mode, logic level gate, shocky diode body, isolated standard, super junction. I'm not getting anything there as a special feature um, for internal ESD protection, right? So you might have to search for ESD protected P-channel MOSFET or something.
<laughs> Getting desperate now. ESD protected P channel MOSFET SO8. <laughs> We're using Google as our parametric search, okay? We're getting a bit desperate now. ESD protection up to 8, eight kilovolts. There you go. It, it may not show it, actually. Um, oh, yeah, we've got, a, uh, we've got a promotional blurb here. SO8 equivalent. And that's exactly what the application we've got here. Actually, look at this. Power source, the batteries, the load circuit. Oh, yeah, ESD protection. Battery, battery application-driven features ESD protection because you want that because when you disconnect the batteries right um the contacts are often exposed to the user and they can zap those so you know that's probably why they've used the esd um here but they've also got another part there that's even closer to the battery terminals that's not esd protected so uh. but yeah you've got to go to like this specific sia 46 467 sia 46 anyway let's let's have a look at that part it's only a 12 volt mosfet okay so we didn't have the equivalent there but yep there. Are. Um, th this one, interestingly, has the uh, protection between uh, drain. Oh, no, they've uh, flipped it the other way. Okay, they've put source at the top, whereas here they've put uh, source at the bottom like this. So it's gate and source. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, all the electrons are going to fall out of that one. So, yeah, um, technically, we can't use DigiKey to find a direct equivalent part because we need that ESD protection. I mean, if we weren't, if we ignored the ESD part of it, then, well, you know, we could get almost anything. So we could actually just probably use this uh, 4425 here. Um, it's, you know, like, I could, look, I could spend an hour going through, like, the characteristic curves and everything, and, and the VGS uh, 10 volts. Anyway, you'd start, uh, you know, comparing your on resistances for a step maximum of 12, maximum 21. Uh, that's 21 milli ohms, that is. They specified in ohms, but uh, that's 21 milli ohms. So I think that's under the other one. So as long as you had them under and stuff like that, you're probably good to go for a switch uh, for a static, uh, like switch, not switching, but a uh like a switch application um whereas in you might have to get more into your dynamics uh switching dynamics down here especially if you're in into the design sm uh, side of switch mode uh power converters you have to be really careful do extensive testing and stuff like that um to get equivalent parts for your bill of materials but for something like this we could probably get away with this part here but anyway we have not found this ESD, like, we, we can't search for an ESD part like this on DigiKey. I mean, you've got to remember, even this, like, like equivalent part over here that had 4303 in the title is a very different MOSFET. It does not have the ESD protection built in. It's it's very different. So if that, if, if that was key to your product and uh, you put accident like specified this one in thinking oh yeah no worries it's got to be equivalent you looked at the top level specifications and looked at the part number 4303 it's got to be the same right i'll just whack that in my bill of materials and then you couldn't buy your sino power one and you went to make a hundred thousand of your farty novelty gadget widgets with your um the apm 4303 and you find that well five percent of them come back as failure in the field because you know little johnny's been zapping the uh terminals when they take the batteries in and out so you can come a guts up completely that way so yeah um it, just because it's got the number in the part number the exact number doesn't mean it's equivalent it's not it says no esd protection so this 4303 is looking like a, a bit of a special snowflake really um, so anyway, let's let's go over to Mouser and see. Uh, let's be the United States of America, shall we? I'm going to choose P channel. Look at this. Look, look at this N channel snobbery here. Um, <laughs> poor old P channels. They only get one option. And then you can just go generic SMD. But because we know exactly what package we want, right? Like we we may not find an equivalent. I like odds are we probably won't find a direct equivalent with ESD protection built in. In fact, um, let's before we even go to that, let's see if nope, Mouser don't even give you any options for like they've just got trade names, um, like which isn't going to help. Um, there's no like ESD things at all. There's nothing. There's nothing. No like special features. At least on DigiKey, you got like special features. Okay, let's do MOSFETs in element 14, shall we? No, we don't want transistors. You see, they have different. They're they're discriminatory. They have transistors and they have FETs. Come on, we want our single MOSFETs. 
because, uh, yep, you want to have a good time, so you want a single MOSFET. And if we search down here, oh, I don't like the way they do it here in these uh, boxes. Ugh, it's just, yeah, yeah, nah. On resistance, case style, transistor mounting, RDS, power dissipation, number of pins, operating max, product range. Once again, they don't, we're, we're getting nothing here. Nothing on the parametric search for like to be able to search for an internal ESD part. So like this is a special snowflake we've picked here. Finding an equivalent for this is, it, it might be impossible. Getting dead, most, oh, I did most fed again. RS components have 10,000 most fets. I think I'll call them most fets from now on. Why not? Anyway, here we go. This is a bit more sensible brand, channel type, transistor configuration, number of elements per chip. Like, yeah, nah, I'm not seeing any, like, any ability to be able to search for, like, unless you're, like, you might get one, like, you might have to, like, search for a whole bunch just randomly until you found one that happened to have ESD protection built in. Um, I just, I don't know. Uh, you might have to go to the manufacturer's website parametric search, and now we're getting pretty specific. Vichy, shall we? MOSFET. See, we could uh, try and cross-reference a part number, Maybe, like SM4303, but like, as if Vichy care about, like, some obscure part from Sino Power. I'm doubting it. <laughs> yeah, zero. All right, here we go. I didn't, I shouldn't have searched for the uh, keyword. I should have gone into the products down here, and we get our parametric table. So, um, dual plus integrated shot key. Uh, no, it's not an integrated shot key. No, they're just all your values. So, it's, it's not... The integrated shot key, right? Let's have a look down here. That's just a very different thing. That's like literally an integrated shot key diode, like a reverse shot key across there, instead of like all MOSFETs will have um, the regular um, like reverse diode in here because it's not actually a physical diode in there. It's actually just an, an inherently, in, in fact, a lot of cases unwanted part of the physical way that the MOSFET is constructed on the silicon. It just gives you a reverse bulk. It's often called a bulk diode or a bulk junction diode because it's part of the bulk silicon um, in there. But this one actually specifically has engineered in there. A, a, another, it's got the irregular bulk one because it's integrated in there, but um, yeah, this one's super special in that it has a um, shot key diode on there for switching um, applications with monolithic shot key diode. Whoa. Right, so this is designed for like really high efficiency um, switching applications and stuff like that. So yeah, there's just no parameters there to search from. So we'd have to go through and, and search for ESD protected MOSFET, in fact, yeah, as a, like we're almost better going back to that Google search. See, we could search for on semi. Look, I just searched for ESD protected P channel uh, MOSFET. And uh, yeah, let's search for, here we go. Right, so maybe if we search for MOSFETs in here, um, we'll get something that has internal MOSFET protection. Maybe we'll get like a, a parametric box, which we can tick. Compliance, uh, no, that'd be like ROS compliance and stuff. Channel polarity configuration, what's what's configuration? No, with shock keys, no. So it doesn't have that parametric uh, search option, but obviously, like, it's in the title. So I search for P-channel ESD protected, and sure enough, I do actually get a few of them, but, you know, minus 12 volts, okay, not suitable, 12 volts, so that's obviously an N-channel, because uh, that's positive. Uh, no, it says P-channel, but it says 12 volts, okay, but it's in an SC88 uh, package, Right, so uh, yeah, that's another SC88. That's a dual one. That's obviously not suitable. Power single channel, uh, 12 volts. Once again, SC88 uh, package, only three amp jobby, like uh, 20 volts. Okay, so we're getting up there. But once again, that's a dual, so no good. Um, and another dual here. <sighs> we're almost getting there with this one here, but this is a SOT732. I don't know, it might have another package in here but no it doesn't so you can forget that um <laughs> you're getting pretty desperate it, technically it does have a thousand pages here but i think you're going to get diminishing returns at this point i don't think we're actually going to get um yeah the the 30 volt jobby i mean i, I can put minus 30 in there and we get ones down here which are actually um an so8 package right but 
if, if you go over there, it does not actually have anything to do with ESD. So we've already gone away from actually getting an exact um, search term here. So eh. so maybe, you know, you're getting pretty desperate now from the mainstream manufacturers, unless you checked every mainstream manufacturer website. You see how hard this is getting? I mean, we can go back to LCSC here, right? But even LCSC, right, does not have um, like any ESD even in the search description. So we can't do that. I mean, we can go to actual uh, MOSFETs, we can go right back to searching like uh, then all of these like more obscure Asian brand which we can get from LCSC. I mean just check out all these you've never heard of right 90% of them you probably can what's California Eastern Laboratories um anyway right and you know there's a few in there that you recognize but most of these you aren't going to recognize okay so there's a whole bunch in here but unfortunately there's no parametric search in here with I mean uh, th there's a type maybe you'll get you know, no, it's just like a P channel. So like there's no parametric thing in here to search for ESD. I mean, we can search for MOSFET ESD. Let's see if we get lucky. MOSFETs 4 that mention ESD. Oh, hang on. Is that Sino Power again? ESD. There you go. It's got ESD in the number. That's like in the actual manufacturer part number. That's interesting. That's worth checking out, but that's a TSOP 8. Um, jeez, we can't win, can we? No, no, but let's let's check that one out anyway, because that's interesting. Oh, no, see, that's a dual jobby, okay. But uh, yeah, and that does have gate protection, so we found it. Like, but, um, is there a single? No, that's, no, they're all jewels. And the other single seems to be down here. Oh, that's a, like an old school JFETI number, um, 2N7000. So an end channel MOSFET with gate protection in here, but still, um, yeah, okay, great. We found another one, um, but it's not an equivalent part, not by any stretch. It's only 300 milliamps. It's not a power part. This is not a power package. Um, it's just a SOT23 jobby and yeah, nah. <laughs> you see, like this, this may actually be impossible. Okay, I'm getting pretty desperate now. P-channel MOSFET SO8 plus ESD, okay? And I got this interesting Infineon uh, selection guide here. And if you check this out, right? Here we go. Look, oh, they look happy. Look at that. They've found it. They've found it. They've found their P-channel 30-volt SO8 MOSFET with ESD protection built in. Oh, fantastic. Anyway, this is, this is pretty cool. But if we search for ESD... Right? Look, it's it's popping up here in the SOT 23s. Okay, you can see that tacked onto the end of this is ESD, uh, ESD protection. But we obviously we want the SO8. Damn it! Right? So we have to go down here and we have to go ESD, ESD. Uh, yeah, no. Go to the next page. Nope. It jumps down right to the bottom. So there's no ESD in an SO8 package. But you can see that Infineon actually have in their part number. You can have actually have an E. In the configuration which has ESD um, there you go and you can get ones with integrated gate resistors and fast switching and qualified for you know certain standards and stuff like that um, but there you go no Infineon SO8s look at this you know seems fairly common like these are all minus 30 volts right so there's a big selection at that 30 volt window right they're very common parts um, but you know like we'd have to get into the 17 amp plus down here oh no I thought that was amps no that's going to be RDS on right no that's going to be rds on so you want the like the lower ones down here so these parts but they don't have and uh, well what's that does that have an e does that technically have an e in it um i i don't know we'd have to <laughs> we'd have to search for that can you get it with and without um do we get the uh, data sheet here we go oh we can get 2000 2400 in stock wow um yeah like it doesn't show it um, F, ESD, ESD class, it just, no, 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 nothing doing. <laughs> like, come on, and we could do this, like, for every manufacturer. You know how many manufacturers there are, including all those Asian ones? Um, hey, come on. And then that search, uh, look a bit further, that turns up this um, NXP, um, like, application um, thing, uh, like Power MOSFET application stuff. Um, see, they don't have happy people who found their, <laughs> they've just got a dodgy old uh, quabcopter in there. Um, looks like the one I built. Um, and, you know, you, you search for ESD, and it's kind of like in there. 
like you can get like some have ESDs, but that's like kind of like it. Do they have ESD clamp protection? Do they not? I like you know no nah, sort of yeah nah. Well, let's go back to DigiKey and let's just see if we can get lucky. Let's win ESD MOSFET transistors FETs MOSFET arrays. No, so we only get arrays. Okay, yes, because they're ESD protected arrays. They're designed for protecting ESD protection on like uh, logic lines and stuff like that. No, no, no. So yeah, that's that's a fail. But I'm I'm just desperate to find anything that's ESD protected, and I'm I. <laughs> It's not going to show up in the description. Like, you would have to get desperate and maybe go into each one and you might get lucky. I mean, you know, just, like, randomly open them. That's what you get when you get to Rochester Electronics. As I said, um, yeah, obsolete stuff. Mm, they specialize in it. Great if you're into military stuff and you're trying to find a 20-year-old part or something to fix your tank, but, you know... <laughs> Look, anyway, um, yeah, like there's nothing here. And sometimes you'd have to be careful. They may not actually show it in the equivalent circuit, but it might actually, you know, tell you that it's like ESD uh, you know, compliant or whatever. But I'm, I'm having a hard time here. This is getting, this is getting ridiculous, right? So, yeah, I think that Sino Power one is pretty, it's very special snowflakey. Um, like, I'm sure, like, we can absolutely get another MOSFET with ESD protection, but trying to get it in the same package, uh, trying to get it in the same voltage and current and RDS, uh, ratings is, is another thing entirely, right? So, yeah, I, I just think we're out of luck. So I'm, I'm going to call it quits. I, I, I... When I started this video, I didn't um, think, oh, yeah, we should actually specifically search for the ESD one. And we can't, really. So once again, this video could be twice this length if I went into specifically searching for all of the parameters, um, you know, like a matching part down here. But, like, we can't even find a simple generic match for this one that has the ESD protection built in, even though... We go to, we, we can find one manufacturer with the exact, almost the exact same part number, except it's got their own, you know, uh, prefix on there. But it's a 4303, and that's and that doesn't have your built-in protection. So, <laughs> all hail the special snowflake Sino Power SM4303 PSK. Um, yeah. I, I don't know. Leave it in the comments down below. Maybe I'll have a, a more squiz. But if you can find, it's a challenge. If you can find a matching uh, part in the same package with the same voltage and current and RDS ratings, I'll, I'll give it that, and ESD protection on the gate, uh, leave it in the comments down below and you can win the internet. So anyway, I hope you found that useful just you know showing you like different methods to actually search for stuff and um it's i highly recommend like taking stuff apart and just trying to figure out you know if you're a newbie take stuff right it's obvious to an experienced person that you know these are going to be mosfets and things like that but you know start taking stuff apart and see if you can identify um what things are in fact that could be a good video like uh, you know just random tear down stuff and go right what does that part do okay let's try to figure out the circuit configuration around it and the package and the traces and the reference designators and we'll try and you know figure out what that part's actually used for that could be interesting anyway i hope you found that video useful if you did please give it a big thumbs up and discuss down below catch you next time <laughs>